Okay, so I remember this story you told me, right? It, it stays with me. You're shortly after your Grammy win, you know, a couple years in, you guys are mm -hmm. big in the music scene, and you and the band members got to be in the Macy's Thanksgiving yeah. Day Parade. Yeah. And when you told that story, I could see, I could just visualize. But you said you saw that video? Somebody brought that to you recently? Yeah, about, uh, about two days ago, a friend of mine. Uh, <laughs> they pull up this uh, video, and I see it's the Macy's Parade. At first, I thought, oh, it's going to be my stepdaughter, Sherry, marching in the uh, Macy's Parade. They marched, I think, in 78 or 79. And then I went, wait a minute, I hear <laughs> Davy Crockett playing. And I see me bobbing my head up and down. I'm going, I said, what was I thinking? That was then. <laughs> that was then. And you had a really... <laughs> real bu was more hair, more bushy hair, and this big mustache, and had this uh, big leather jacket on. But it was pretty cool. I bet it was It was cool. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, we did do that. Yeah. 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 It's coffee near me. I'm Barbara D. We're on the, we're on the good. road. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> we're in Glasgow. And uh, we're at Jitter Cafe. And we're talking with Kentucky headhunter Greg Martin. Hello. But you, there's a lot more to you. You're not just a Kentucky headhunter. You have the Greg Martin group. You do the ho lowdown, hoedown on D93. I have ADD, so I'll do several things. But so. you know what? You shared with me something. To, I didn't know this. You really are like a radio fanatic. Yeah, I love radio, and not that I have, I, I wasn't born with the Darth Vader voice, hey, you know, and all that stuff, but uh, what got me into it, that what really set it off probably is riding around in my dad's Plymouth in the late 50s, and I always thought, I'd hear these DJs all day long, and back then they all sounded the same, I'm yeah. going, how's this guy? on all day, you know, and he's on every station. I don't know why back then they had... There was a standard for the there voice. There was a standard. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't distinguish the voices back then, you know. But sometime in the mid-60s, growing up in Louisville, there was WAKY and WKLO and WLOU. AKY and KLO were the pop stations, and they were just amazing, great stations. And... Um, LOUs with Soul Station. If you want to hear the really deep soul cuts from the South, you'd listen to those guys. And I was just infatuated. I, you know, we were starting around 64, 65. So I would take a bus and go stay with my grandmother two or three times a year who lived downtown. So I'd get off the bus, the Louisville Transit bus at Broadway, and I would walk down Fourth Street, which had music stores, had record stores, but I would go to WKLO and they had a showcase window, and I watched the DJs work. Oh wow! Yeah. And I just was so infatuated, you know, two turntables, they had a cart machine, and they had all these cards. A cart every, machine. Yeah, cart <laughs> machine, and and I had all these records, which I thought, how cool is that? So, you know, in the back of my mind, it was just something I always wanted to do, until the guitar kind of took hold. It was kind of fighting for my attention attention at that time as well. Yeah. And really, so the radio thing was always there because when we moved from Louisville, dad up rootless, just decided, okay, this is it. Oh, and <laughs> out into the country? Oh yeah, to the went? country. Yeah. We went moved, to, that's what we said, we're going to the country, you know. And after seeing the Love and Spoonful and thinking, oh man, that's what I really want to do. I want to be John Sebastian or Zal Yanovesky, you know, but, but then, when he moved us down, all I had was a little record collection, one uh, stereo with one side where it wouldn't, wouldn't work. But I had my Beach Boy records, my hums of the Love and Spoonful and a few other things. And I would listen to WLS and WCFL at sure, night. Sure, that was your window. That was at your night. window. We had WOV, I'm sorry, WCDS here in Glasgow, great station. But no longer did I have WKLO, WKY. But I have a question. Yeah. Somebody told me, so you're, you're a kid, you have a schoolmate back in the mid-60s who has, you learn, has a blues collection, like they have albums of B.B. King's, yes. and you knock on their door, yes. <laughs> and you say, can I listen to your B.B. King well, records? Well, you know, starting in 68, <laughs> when the guitar thing really took hold, and there's a whole story that goes with that, and it would take way longer. But I, uh, my brother Gary, who's no longer with us, he, when he went from playing rock to bluegrass, 
He gave me his record collection. He gave me a Gretsch Silver Jet from the 50s, and he gave me a Magnetone amplifier. But in this box of cool records, I mean, there was some great soul records, Chuck Berry records. There was a B.B. King record, Nightlife and Waiting on You, which was on ABC Dunhill. And when I put on Waiting on You, there's this guitar intro. I'm going, wait a minute. This kind of sounds like what Eric Clapton's doing with Cream in a subdued way. Um, I said, okay, this is, this is it. This is what's going on. So there was an African-American lady at her schoolmate, and I had some great friends at school. And I found out she worked at the office when we would talk, you know, every so often. I said, well, yeah, my parents have some old Slim Harpo and B.B. King. And ah. so I went knocking on the door. Arby Kennard, I remember, he was so sweet, him and his wife. I said, oh, yes. We got some of those, and I went through them, and they let me take them home and borrow them. And they let you borrow, yes, like the lot lending lending record yes. place. You know, that um, was around 70, 71, 1971. Yeah, we're so so radio, a huge part of who you are, but music, a huge part yeah. of who you are. You, when did you know? When was that moment where you thought, well, I got this? There's a definite moment for sure. Um, it was always vying for my attention, but my cousin Larry and my brother Gary, both very vital parts of Larry and it. Gary. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Bobby. My, my cousin Bobby would always do things with me. And, okay, they would take me, they take me to see music. Uh, we went to see Mike Wiseman one time, but I went to see The Love and Spoonful in 1966. There was a moment in 1968 that my cousin took me to see a group in Louisville, Kentucky called Elysian Field that had a record out on Imperial Records. And as soon as they started kicking in, I don't know, it was like a spiritual experience. After that, it was just guitar, 24-7. I'll be darned. Frank Bugby was the guitarist, and I, I uh, cite him up there with Eric Clapton, B.B. King, and Jimi Hendrix. And, and it, it, it happened. It happened It right happened, 24-7. 50 years ago, about this time, 50 years ago. Well, that we're That's talking about. That's half a century. Yeah. Half a century you've been Can't playing believe. the guitar. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you do you done good. I've done all <laughs> you right. done good. I can I can tune it. I can still hold it. You know. Yeah. Greg Martin, Kentucky Headhunter. Greg Martin Group. Low down, ho down. You're watching Coffee Near Me. You know you can continue the conversation in the comment section and let us know if there's someone you'd like to sit down and have a cup of coffee with. I'm Barbara Deed. Thanks for joining us and thanks to Cole at Jitter Cafe in Glasgow, Kentucky. Cheers. 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 Thank you.